In this video, I will show you how to cast silicone around an armature into a mold. First, I built a wire armature that registers inside the mold. It is suspended in the center and held in place with tie downs on the 1630 resin foot plate. There are openings on the rig points that you want to make sure don't fill with silicone. In order to provide a buffer, you can use foil tape to plug up the holes. I want to note that the mold is made out of TC2180, which is good for foam cold casting and silicone casting. The sculpt and mold were made by Katie Strutz with mold making guidance from Matzilla Duran. Once you have the foil tape in place, paint the armature with cell vinyl in the color of the silicone pigment you will be using for the skin. I'm using a cut up makeup sponge to dab the paint on with. This will ensure that the darker color of the armature doesn't show through the silicone. You can also use acrylic paint in lieu of vinyl cell. The wire hands are already white, so I'm not going to paint them with the cell vinyl. You'll want to use gloves as silicone and especially the pigment are very messy. It's a non-toxic material so the gloves aren't necessarily needed for exposure protection. I'm using GI 1110 from Composite Casting. Make sure you get the transparent kind so your colors are correct when mixing the pigment. The silicone will come with an activator. Note again that I am using GI 1110. I will not use the activator that comes with the silicone. Instead, I will use 179 because it allows the silicone to be more stretchy and tear resistant. It's okay to use the GI 1110 activator that comes with it it is just industry standards to use the 179 that was researched and developed by Shea Bordeaux at Leica. You need a gram scale for measuring out your proportions. Take a bucket and zero out the scale. You want to see the line on the scale and the zero line up. Since my silicone has been sitting for a long while, since 2014 to be exact, be sure to mix it up well. Use a paint stir stick to get the silicone into the bucket. This is much cleaner and calculated than directly pouring the material out of the bucket.
I'm using a tongue depressor to clean off the excess silicone. You want to save every little bit you have because it is an expensive material. I clean the stir stick off with a paper towel so that I can reuse it in the future. I have just eyeballed how much silicone I think I will need to cast and seam the body. Now it's time to find out the weight of the material, which we call the base. I'm using a traditional gram scale, but you can also use a digital one. I write down the weight of the silicone and then determine what the ratio is for pigment. 1.5 to 2% of pigment is the amount you should add to the clear silicone. Multiply the base, which is your silicone, with 2% to get the pigment weight. Add the two together and put that weight on the scale. I'm using a product called Silk Pig, which stands for silicone pigment. This stuff is very messy and gets everywhere, so be careful when using it. I'm using white pigment instead of a flesh tone because this particular character is a ghost. Using a tongue depressor, add the pigment to the silicone so that the scale ticker lines up. I brush the pigment off of the tongue depressor with a toothpick. You can tap on the scale to feel how much more weight you need. When mixing the pigment into the silicone, I like to start with the sides and avoid putting the paint stir stick directly into the pigment. This is because I want all of the pigment to mix in with the silicone instead of having it transferred and absorbed onto the stick. You want to be sure to mix the pigment in very thoroughly. Now I'm taking out some silicone and putting it to the side. I will use the smaller batch when seaming the lines left over by the two-part molds. 
Silicone will never cure on its own without the activator, so the smaller batch will keep forever. Now that I've siphoned some silicone out, I need to reweigh the silicone to make sure I use the correct ratio of activator. You need to take the weight of the bucket into consideration and delete it from the overall weight. To do so, use an empty bucket of the exact size to zero out the scale. Now the base weighs 338.3 grams. You want to add 10% activator, which comes out to 33.83 grams. Add the two together and change the scale weight to that amount. Minus 372.13 grams. Shake up your activator before pouring. I like using a paper cup so that I can fold a spout into the end of it when pouring it into the silicone bucket. Prep the mold for casting by opening it and removing the armature. Once the activator is mixed in, you have about 10 minutes of working time before it starts to kick and solidify. You will fill the back half of the mold with silicone first, and then the front side. Prep your curved nose syringes by cutting the tip off. Otherwise, the tip of the hole will be too thin to properly extrude the thick silicone. Pinch the paper cup together to make a little spout. This will allow you to cleanly pour the activator in. I am touching the scale to see how much more activator is needed. I slipped up and went a little over the 10%, which ideally you want to avoid. It will be okay, it's just that the more activator you use, the less integrity the silicone has. 
Mix together thoroughly, but as quickly as you can, noting that the silicone will begin to kick in a few minutes. Now I'm putting the silicone in a pressure pot to evacuate it. This will remove the air bubbles you just added in during the mixing process. You can see the bubbles rising to the top of the silicone. The silicone will rise and fall. I'm letting the pressure out to let it drop before it spills over the sides of the cup but still giving it time to drop on its own accord. After it has dropped, I let the compressor continue for a little longer. When you are done, turn off the compressor and let the pressure out. Pour your silicone into all of the syringes. You want to do this with all of the syringes at the beginning because when the silicone kicks, it will be harder to pour. Place the syringes nozzle side up so that the air bubbles will rise to the top.
Inject the silicone into the back half of the mold with the large syringe. Make sure you cover all the surface area. Use the smaller syringes to inject the fingers and hands. There are bubbles even though we evacuated the silicone in the pressure pot. Pop them open using a toothpick to ensure there will be no imperfections in the final cast. Place the armature into the molds. Refill your large syringe. You can see that the silicone has begun to kick because it is more viscous and harder to pour. Inject the front side of the molds. I'm carefully adding more silicone from the bucket. It's messier and is spilling over the sides, but it should be okay. Inject the fingers and hands with your second small syringe. Don't forget to pop any bubbles that may arise. Be sure to inject the feet at the very end because gravity will make the silicone spill out. Put the two sides of the mold together and clamp shut. Use F-clamps to secure the seal.
pre-position the F clamps as needed to be equidistant across the mold. Let the silicone cure overnight. Make sure to let the mold sit upside down while it cures. This is because bubbles will rise to the top and it's better to have them in the feet and legs that are covered with clothing instead of the neck or chest. The next morning, check to see if your silicone is solidified in the remainders of the bucket. If it is, great! Now you can demold your puppet. Start by taking the F-clamps off. Use the screwdriver to pop open the mold utilizing the pry points. Rotate the mold and pry off in every direction. This character is very thin, so you can see some armature touchdowns in the back. This is very normal and isn't a big deal because it will be covered in clothing. Other than that, it's a pretty solid cast. There are a few air bubbles in the legs that we can fill in with silicone using a syringe. Once you've removed and examined your puppet, brush baby powder over it. Silicone attracts dirt and the powder will keep it clean.
The next steps are to clip off the flashing, buff, and seam the body. Now you have an almost finished puppet.